Daily I shall worship thee, Lamb of God who died for me, who extended endless mercies. Daily I shall worship thee. Put your hands together, give God praise. I know I look real handsome today, so it was um, my Sunday to wear a suit. I, I pastor a church that has multi-generations, so I wear robes, suits, jeans, everything, and today was my suit day, amen. <laughs> so, yeah. But I brought my sneakers because um, we've been doing some running. Um, when life happens to us, um, whether we believe it or not, we have a flight or flight, flight or fight mentality that we're either going to stick it out with God or we're going to run. How many people will be honest and say there was times in my life that I ran, that I heard God say something? I see your hands even in the dark. I'm serious. It's like, Lord, what am I doing? There are so many times where you think you got it and then all of a sudden things begin to happen in your life and all of a sudden you don't. I was a young, uh, about, thank you, you're so nice. Um, I was about um, 16 years old. We was at a park in the city of Buffalo and it was about uh, eight of us playing football and all of a sudden, when we got to uh, the middle of the game, we just saw a large group of guys walking our way. And um, we all looked at each other and says, hey, we don't know whether they're friend or foe, but you take this one, I'll take this one, you take that one. And I said, hey, Richie, you take the big one right there. He's a big guy. I didn't hear him. I said, Rich, Rich. R Rich was gone. <laughs> and if we're going to be honest, there's a lot of times that we run. Here's the crazy thing about the story today that we find in Second, uh, First Kings chapter number 19. We're going to start with verse number one. Here's the thing is that if you look at chapter 18, the prophet Elijah just won. He just had victory at Mark Carmel. Y'all know that story? Well, let me run it by you real quick. The prophet was, was going to have a challenge at Mark Carmel with the prophets of Baal. And so they went, he let them go first, and they said, the God that answers by fire those is the God that we're going to serve. Well, guess what happened? Um, they tried, you know, they erected an altar and started cutting themselves, screaming and yelling. And the prophet said, well, maybe your God is asleep. Maybe he's on vacation. Maybe he can't hear you. Shout a little bit louder. When he got enough of that, Elijah came and he took and dug out a moat. And he took 12 barrels of water and put it on top. Now, if you're looking for fire, you don't want water near fire. Put water on it. Prayed unto God, and God sent down fire. He killed all of Baal's prophets, and this is where we find chapter number 19, verse number 1. Okay, let me... Nope. I, it would have really worked very well. This would have been so nice if um, I didn't leave... My glasses in my, at my church. I'm just saying it would have worked very well. Um, <laughs> chapter 19, when you have it, say amen. So now watch what the Bible says. says. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, also how he had executed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, so let the gods do to me and more if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. 
And when he saw that, he arose and ran for his life and went to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servant there. Now, this is crazy because you got to record. I forgot how far I can go. Um, just let me know if I'm all off. <laughs> what ends up happening is he got the news after victory. Come on. Chapter 18, he has this victory where he has this moat uh, around this uh, 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 altar. He takes 12 stones, erect the altar, put 12 barrels of water, dump it on uh, uh, the, 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 the stones, and fire still shoots out of heaven like a sci-fi movie, and all of a sudden it burnt everything. Oh my God, that's victory. Then he gets a message from Jezebel that by this time tomorrow, I'm going to do to you what you did to the prophets. I'm going to kill you. Now you got to understand his first reaction. What do you do after victory? How do you handle a setback after God has given you victory? So now watch this. Watch what the Bible says. The Bible says that uh, he went to, he went and he saw that and he rose and ran for his life. Y'all see that? And went to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servant there. He literally left his servant. Two things that you want to pick up out of that particular text. He went to Beersheba, which is in Judah. Judah means what? Praise. When you have an issue, don't you think it will be wise to run to God. That was a question. I mean, y'all gonna work with me today. <laughs> that was literally a question. Yeah, yeah, we should run to God. What do we find in God? We find the presence of God. We find joy. We find peace. We find strength in our worship. Have anybody ever just, just had a bad day and then turned on that right song and it just ministered to you? How many people got a song that they like to, to, to hear when they're going through different situations? There's just that song. It just always touches you. It always grabs you. Let me put my song on. I'm going to be okay. I'm going to spend this time with God. I'm going to get in his presence. Well, then why would the prophet run from God, go to Beersheba, which is a place of praise in Judah. And then the second thing he did was he left his servant there. What happens when we get isolated, then we are then left with our own thoughts? How many people will be honest on this morning at New Story, watch this, and say, I don't want to be left with my own thoughts? Come on, let's be honest, because sometimes we're negative. Sometimes we, we overthink. How many overthinkers I got in here? Whoa, whoa. <laughs> September series starting in September, first Sunday is overthinkers. <laughs> Do you understand? We overthink. And here we find the prophet that is now, watch this, he will not worship, he will not praise God, and he left himself isolated by himself because he left his friend, his servant, in Beersheba. You don't want to be left alone. It's crazy that he just said, Pastor Scott just got finished talking about that life group, doing, not having to do life on your own. When you are left by yourself with your thoughts, when you're left by yourself overthinking something, you can go crazy. Watch this. Um, this is going to be God the rest of the service. <laughs> this is God. I hear news. Instead of running to God, I run from God. I leave. There is no getting, first of all, in our little thinking, we think we can run from God. You can't. He said, if I make my bed in hell, you're there. <laughs> if I take wings and fly, <laughs> you're there. You know, we can't escape God, but for some reason, we think we can run away from God. The problem with us running away from God is that when we run away from God, we're left with ourselves. 
We don't have the power to change our situation. So why would we want to be away from God? Why wouldn't we want to be closer to God? He is literally a case study for depression. When you run away from God, other things attach itself to you. For those that said that they've run away from God, what, 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 what attached itself to you? What attached? Come on. Loneliness. Anyone else? Huh? Depression. Fear. Do you see what happens? Because guess what? Even when we think we are close to God, those things can come and try to attack us. Can you imagine when we run from God, what's going to happen that now we're isolated? So now, do I have a friend? Do I have any friends here? Who, uh, who, who, who's you right here? Hi, what's your name? Come here. What's your name? Joe. Joe, come on. Come be with, be, be, be with me and God. Come on. So now, here's the thing. Not only am I trying to avoid God, I'm running. I'm going to as far away as I can from someone that's trying to manipulate me because she can't do to me unless God allows it to happen. You, I don't want to call you my servant, but let's say friend, <laughs> okay. okay? So I take my friend, now tell me, tell me, tell, tell me an encouraging word. An encouraging word? Yeah, um, give me an encouraging word to me. I'm, I'm running me. from God, say something to me. Uh, God is good all the time. God is good all the time? All the time, God is good. All the time, God is good. <laughs> I thought that was a black church thing. No, that's everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> we be saying, I ain't know y'all did that. God is good? all the time? God is good. Praise him. That's how we do it. <laughs> I love this church. Watch what ends up happening. He's telling me God is good. He's also telling me um, uh, we just won at Mount Carmel. We, the, our God answered by fire. Guess what I do? I walk away from him too. You walk away when you can't hear God's voice anyway, then you leave the person that's trying to encourage you. You cannot afford to be isolated when you're in your own thoughts, when you're in your own mind, when you're already beating yourself up, when you already, th we're gonna find out what he was thinking, okay? All right, Joe, stay right there, because I'm gonna need you. <laughs> Where, 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 where were we? What verse we at? Four. Now watch what four says. Four says, but he himself went a day's journey into the what? Into the wilderness and came and sat down under a broom tree and he prayed that he might die and said, it is enough now. Lord, take my life for I am no better than my father's. Now watch what ends up happening. He left his friends. He's by himself. He gets up, up under a juniper tree. Watch what ends up happening. He says, enough is enough. Is there anybody in here that have ever been on an assignment from God and you had one victory? It started off great. Everything was running smooth. You started children's church. You started a small group. You started the music ministry. You started the audiovisual ministry. You started the greeters ministry. You got youth groups. You got all this stuff and everything is going good. And then all of a sudden, something happens and it's not going as good as you thought. Watch what happens. He says, enough is enough. I can't take this no more. And then he said some powerful words. He says, I'm no better than my father's. Because he had the expectation that after that miracle at Mount Karma, when fire came, literally came down from heaven, burnt up the, off, uh, the, uh, the altar, that he just believed that there's going to be a national revival and people are going to now serve God. And it didn't happen. He's on the run. Watch where he goes, into the wilderness. The wilderness, watch this, is a place of uninhabitation. It's not where people go to live. 
So what happens when you allow your depression, your anger, your loneliness get the best of you and now you don't want to live? All because something didn't happen the way we thought. So now I'm by myself. Now I'm about to kick you out, okay? Okay? I was going to really kick you, but I'm tired. <laughs> Bye. I don't have a friend. I'm by myself. I'm in the wilderness. I say enough is enough. Then I say what? I'm no better than my fathers. They couldn't start a revival. They couldn't get the people to serve you, God. I'm no better. I might as well die. I come to tell you today that just because there may be failure in your life, doesn't mean you're a failure. Do not identify, somebody need to write this down, I will no longer identify in the areas of, that I failed because I am not my failure. Failure is a place that we can learn from. Failure is a place that we can grow from. Failure is a place that we get better from. And when class is in session, this is not the time to fall asleep or be on your iPad. This is the time to take notes because what you're going to do is I'm going to learn from this. Here the prophet is not learning and he gets to the place. He gets to the place. Watch this. He gets to the place where he says, I, I might as well die. Y'all saw that? Now watch what it says in verse number five, five through eight. Then it says, then as he lay and slept under the broom tree, suddenly an angel touched him and said unto him, arise and eat. Then he looked and there by his head was a cake baked on coals and a jar of water. So he ate and drank and he laid down again and the angel of the Lord came back the second time and touched him and said, arise and eat because the journey is too great for you. So he arose and ate and drank and he went in the strength of the food 40 days and 40 nights as uh, 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 far as Horeb, the mountain, the mountain of God. Literally, this is Mount Sinai. He falls asleep, God wakes him up, and he feeds him. And get, the first thing he does is not try to get him to talk. The first thing he does is to replenish him. So when you find someone that has ran away from God, the first thing is not to try to drag them back into church. Sometimes you just got to give them something to eat. You got to take them to your favorite spot. You got to go to the restaurant. You got to get a slice of pizza. You got to go get some coffee. And if you're going to get pizza, you might as well get wings. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. It kind of goes hand in hand. A lot of times we want to force people back, and that's not the issue. The first thing God does in this text is minister to his physical need. His physical need was replenishing food, water. Now he's able to go 40, 40, 40, 40, 40 days and 40 nights. He gets to, he gets to horror. Now watch what the Bible says. We're still in the Bible. Still in, all I have is the Bible today. Watch this. And, and there he went into a cave and spent the night in that place. What is a cave? A cave is a dark place. Who said depression earlier? A, a depression is a cave. It's a dark place. You're isolated in a cave in darkness. And let me tell you something. You don't see no hope. You don't see nothing. You're just giving up. How many people will be honest and say, at some time in my life, I have been in a dark place. I felt like I was in a cave. I, nothing was working. I had an assignment from God. And it may not even necessarily be an assignment from God. I was failing at everything. My marriage was failing. Ministry was failing. Come on. You was failing at your job. You couldn't keep a job. The bills were piling up. All these things is happening in your life. How many times have you ever been in a situation to where you just wanted to go into your man cave? You just wanted to go somewhere and hide hiding is not the answer unless you're hiding under the wings of the sh oh god I feel, <laughs> I feel good this morning watch what ends up happening watch what ends up happening Jesus is now God is at the place now where he ministers to his need he's at he's at the cave now watch what happens at the cave uh, uh, God asks him what, what are you doing here 
because this is not your assignment. The cave is not your assignment. See, last week, as, as, as Pastor Scott was uh, a teacher, he talked about someone getting an assignment and trying to run. I'm talking about someone that literally had an assignment, was victorious in the assignment, but then came up against some little stuff called Jezebel and she wanted to threaten him and now he's on the run. Everybody's not at the same place, but watch this, the same thing is happening, they're running. They're running from God. How many people ever had a good year, but one bad year throws you off? I, I, like how, I, I like how Job said it. Job, Job said when his wife said, why don't you just curse God and die? He, he had a heck of a day. If I was going to preach that, I, I, I would have preached. So you had a bad day. <laughs> you know, Job had a bad day, right? He has his bad day, all his children, all his cattle, all, everything is gone. His wife said, you might as well curse God and die. He said, shall we accept uh, the good and not the evil? There's good days and there's what? There's bad days. But how many people will understand that the good days for me, for me, maybe not for you, but for me, the good days outweigh the bad days. God's been so, oh God, let me stop because I, 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 you know, I don't want to get too happy. I got my sneakers on, I'm liable to run. Watch this. He says, where are you? So, so he said, I have been zealous uh, for the Lord, God of hosts, for the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, tore down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they seek to take my life. So you got to understand, he took everything to himself. He's overthinking. I'm alone. I'm, I'm the only one here. I'm the only one that haven't bowed down. They done killed all your prophets. See, a lot of times when you overthink, you begin, anybody here ever um, said something more than once and then now all of a sudden you started believing what you said? Even though it's a lie straight, for, and, 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 and we said straight from the pit of hell. It's a lie. He's the father of lies, but we start believing the lie. Let me throw this at you and I'm gonna go back. Watch this, we have to be careful of word curses. Word curses are, are words that are spoken over your life in a negative sense. And then what ends up happening, it takes root in your life. And then all of a sudden, you start believing the word curse. You never going to amount to anything. Ain't nobody in your family graduate uh, college. Ain't nobody, anybody ever had somebody tell you something negative and then it started taking root? You started, I hope I could be myself here. You ugly. You're never going to lose the weight. You're never going to get married. You're never going to own a home. You're never going to have a successful job. The enemy, and watch what we do. How many people start believing it to the point where you repeat it? I ain't gonna never, I ain't gonna never lose this weight. See, y'all just don't know. I, I might look big today, but man, I was bigger. At my height, I was uh, almost 360 pounds. I'm down to 312 right now. <laughs> this a new suit. My old suits, I used to be able to, now I can just flip it over me like it's. <laughs> What people told you you could never do, you have to get that out of your spirit by saying, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Come on, let's go. Um, uh, where are we? We, 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 we? we got to the text. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Uh, verse number 11. Then he said, go, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by and a great and strong wind tore into the mountains and broke the rock in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind and after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake and after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire and after the fire, a still small voice. 
What am I saying? God came three times, three different ways to the cave. He came in an earthquake. He came in, in a whirlwind. He came in a fire. And each one of those times, the Bible lets us know God wasn't in that. Y'all see that? He came in a still, small voice, a whisper. Watch this. Sometimes you got to calm down the noise so that you can hear God's voice. God is already speaking to you while you're on the run. He's already speaking to you, but you have to get in your spirit. You have to calm yourself so that you might be able to hear what God is saying. God is speaking. Do you not know that there are, there are, um, there's heavy metal being played in this room right now? Uh, there's sports talk. There's politician uh, debates going on in this room right now. How many people believe that? Want to know why? Radio waves. It's in the atmosphere. But you have to be on the right frequency in order to pick it up. It's here. But we don't have the frequency to pick it up. God is speaking. But are you on the right frequency? Are you hearing God? Have you turned? Have you aligned your heart with God so that you can hear what God is saying to you? So now watch what happens. What this actually shows is that the prophet likes noise. He thinks God is going to move in a very explosive way like he just moved with him before. And if you, if you remember, God moved in a whirlwind before. God moved in an earthquake before. So God moved with fire with him. So surely God is going to move like that right now. No, God is saying, I'm coming to you in a still small voice. Y'all see that right there in the text. Watch what happens. Let's move. Let's move. So he gets right there. He gets right there. He says, he says in verse number 13. So, so, so it was when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entrance of the cave. Suddenly a voice came to him and said, where, wh what are you doing here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts because because the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, tore down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. And I alone am left, and, and, and they seek my life. Come on, to take my life. Then the Lord said unto him, Go, return your way to the wilderness of Damascus, and when you arrive, anoint Hazel as king over Syria. Wait a second, y'all just missed it. Y'all don't even know when to say amen. You just missed it. My kind of guy. Now, now watch what ends up happening. Now, if we're going to be honest, if we're going to be honest, watch what ends up happening. He literally is at the place where he hears from God, and what does he do? Complain. What does God do? He gives him a new assignment. This is so heavy to me. Watch what ends up happening. He goes and God allows him to vent. See, when I grew up, I grew up in a culture that we, they, they told us like, we couldn't approach God. Be careful how you approach God. Like, we couldn't say, God, I'm upset. You don't say that. You bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continue to be in his mouth. How many people know that you can go to God with your emotions and hand those emotions over to God? Say, so God, I need to learn to trust you more. Here's what the prophet did. Oh, my God. The prophet did all that talking, and God gave him an assignment. Because watch what happens. When he heard he was going to be chased down and killed, he thought he failed. He thought that was the end. He began to walk in depression. I wish I could walk down there real quick, but I can't. How many people recognize that when you leave the presence of God, when you run from God, you run into other stuff? 
you run into depression, you run into fear, you run into doubt. What have you ran into lately? What areas in your life do you feel like you failed at? So now, because it didn't work the way you thought it was going to work, now you begin to run from God. You're mad. I don't care what you've been through. God's hand is still on your life. He gives him an assignment. Y'all see that in the text? How many people here, sometimes when you feel like a failure, you devalue who you are? When you feel like you lost this job, you lost, people lost a lot of money in the stock market. I mean, sometimes you, what makes you feel like a failure ends up making you feel like you've devalued, like you don't have the same value. And I come here to, to, to new story to tell each and every last one of you that you have kingdom value. That even though everything did not go the way you thought, let me tell you something. God had it in his plan and he has another assignment for you. God, God is showing him that I trust you. And somebody in here that even though things didn't happen the way you went, it seemed like it unraveled. God's saying, I trust you. Life has a way of unraveling. My, 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 my grandmother, my grandmother um, told me to go take a fitted sheet. Well, she told me to go take a sheet and put it on the bed and make the bed. I took the fitted sheet. Y'all know what a fitted sheet is? All my young people, that's the one with the little, you gotta pull it. And so I got the one corner, got the other corner, it's a little tight. I got this corner, put that one in. Now I'm trying to, ew. And as soon as I got it, on it, everything unraveled. Kept trying and everything kept unraveling. I had a full size fitted sheet for a king size bed. It's not gonna fit. Why did I tell you that? Because sometimes life is like that. As soon as you get certain areas in your life together, and you get that last piece, if I can just do this, I'll be okay. And guess what ends up happening? As soon as you do it, everything else begins to unravel. But I come to speak victory into your life. I come to tell you that even though when it seems like life is unraveling, that you're in God's hand and you're okay. You're safe. God has your back. He already knows what he has planned for you. There is an assignment on your life. Even when you think you're not valuable, even when you think that you have failed, God sees past that failure, which wasn't a failure. It was you in your head. Look at somebody real quick and say, get out your head. Some people will not even do what God is telling them to do because you're too busy devaluing yourself. How many people ever devalued yourself? Come on, come on, let's be. I, I'm not smart enough. I, I got uh, Jessica here. I used to sit around tables with smart people like her. And I'm like, I don't know why I'm at this table. At that time, I didn't even have an associate's degree. You got people with masters and doctors. And I said, so Shep, what do you think about it? I don't think nothing. <laughs> but I kept getting invited because I actually did have something to say. I just didn't believe it. I didn't believe it until I understood my assignment. And the reason why we keep running because we're not on assignment or the assignment is scary or you think the assignment is too big for you. But if God gave you an assignment, he also is going to give you the capacity to complete the assignment. How many people believe that if God gave you something to do, he's going to give you the ability, the strength to do it? He 
gave him an assignment. He also told him, I'm, I'm sending you down here. I, I got a young guy that you're going to make a prophet. All this stuff is because this cave, this wilderness, this running, this isolation, this by myself. Can I tell you something? It all happened. You want to know why? Because he ran. He didn't ask God what to do. When I was younger, I would go to my dad after he called me, and he would say, Andre, go upstairs. <laughs> dad, I know. He said, you didn't wait for me to tell you <laughs> what to get. How many times God calls our name, but we don't wait to get all the instructions? This is a powerful text. How many people, and we pray, how many people under the sound of my voice, those that may watch this later, how many people have ever felt like giving up? You end up isolated, you end up in a cave, you end up in the wilderness. A wilderness is, is a place that is uninhabitable. Uh, a, a cave is a dark place, dreary. Well, I wanna pray that you come out of that place. And that not only will you come out of that place, but you'll never go back to that place. And that when things begin to happen that seem scary, you'll run to God and not from God. How many people in the sound of my voice say I could use a prayer like that? Would you stand right where you are? Would you mind standing? If you're saying, I need strength to stand. Some things get real scary. I never forget at the, at the end, I, I don't even like saying the C word, but after the end of that thing that happened in 2020, when we was going back into our church, I felt the Lord lead me to just redo the church. We're going to come back. We're going to come back to a brand new looking church. And uh, we didn't have all the money. And I told the trustees, I will not touch what's already in the savings I'm going to raise one offering in the month of July, and then we're going to do the work in August, and then we're going to move and get everything done. Well, I only raised $3,000, but I had about twelve, thirteen thousand dollars $13,000 worth of work I wanted to do. And I ended up doing it without touching the money. God just started blessing. I was fearful, but I had to move in faith. I don't know where you are in your faith, but I need us to have boldness through the Holy Spirit. Because whether you believe it or not, the Holy Spirit did not come for us just to speak in tongues. That's not why the Holy Spirit came. It came to give us boldness. And ye shall receive power, and after that, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses. We're supposed to be bold witnesses, but what happens when you go to witness to somebody and they cuss you out? Can you keep being loving? Can you keep, or do you run? This ain't for me. I've had enough. Somebody need to write the book. Somebody need to go back to school. Somebody need to start the business. I don't know where you are, but I'm praying that you will not give up. I'm praying that you will go forth in God. Father, we thank you. There are those that are standing. There's some that's standing in their mind, in their spirit, that they really have all of these things that's up against them. They thought they had victory, then all of a sudden, everything fell apart. But on today, God, I pray that you will give them strength, that you will give them boldness in the name of Jesus. Father, I love you. Father, I love you. 
I love you because you're going to give your people that don't even feel valuable. You're going to show them how valuable they really are, that they have kingdom value, that we, they are needed, that they are needed, that they are needed to, to enhance and to improve and to build on the kingdom of God. And we thank you for it right now. We rebuke every word curse, every negative thought that we have for ourselves. God, we rebuke low self-esteem. We rebuke depression and fear and doubt, and we shall walk boldly in your word. God, whatever assignment you have for us in this season, we say yes. God, if you want me to be the one that's generous, I say yes. God, if you want me to be the one that is a peacemaker, God, I say yes. God, if you're the one that wants me to bridge and have the ministry and the message of reconciliation, I say yes. God, I speak boldness for everyone under the sound of my voice to every area in their life, God, you will show them that they'll never have to run from you again. They can run to you. And God, we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless.